I am a major proponent for G83. Is it a magical solve all your problems cold that'll immediately make you happy? Maybe, but probably not. But what it is, it's a great drilling cycle and a can cycle to help you in a certain set of scenarios. Hey team, this is Luke with Practical Machinist and welcome back for another great episode of The Lathe Lab. We're going to be going over drilling, but not in the sense that you might think. We're going to be continuing our journey through the world of CNC programming with an emphasis on lathe. Past few episodes we did had to do with programming. We're going to continue the trend. Pertaining to drilling, we're going to be going over another can cycle today. This time, it's a PEC drilling can cycle, or commonly referred to from G-code heads as G83. This applies to a FANUC control. I don't know if it's uh, OSP or Siemens or anything like that, probably. If G83 doesn't apply to that, they probably have their own. But that's what we're going to be covering, G83 PEC drilling can cycle. What a can cycle is, if you're unsure, you can check back on the last couple episodes, we go over it. But just to reiterate, it's a way of programming that simplifies your programming method. So you don't have to write multiple lines of program and plot each point and each direction of Z, G0, G1, etc. It condenses in a whole programming cycle into one or two lines. So with that said, I'm going to show you what a G83 looks like and then we're going to unpack what we see. That is a G83 PEC drilling cycle in action. I am a major proponent for G83. Is it a magical solve all your problems code that'll immediately make you happy? Maybe, but probably not. But what it is, it's a great drilling cycle and a can cycle to help you in a certain set of scenarios. One reason I think is very applicable is if you're doing deep hole drilling in which you don't have coolant through the tool. Now in a perfect world, every tool, every operation, every machine would have coolant through the drill. We have some machines here that are through spindle coolant, we have some that aren't. So you have your coolant directed either through, which is through spindle, which is piped into the back, comes out the flutes, or if you don't have that, it's flood, what we call flood coolant, where as your drill is in the machine, it's the water's directed here. When you're deep hole drilling and you don't have through spindle coolant, the bottom of your drill is dry. There's no flood coolant that's going to be able to get through. And any that does, it will not be efficacious enough to properly cool the bit and flush out the chip. For that reason, I really like peck drilling cycles. What I consider deep drilling is anything past three times deep, five times deep. So when you're drilling deep, five times deep or more, and you don't have through tool coolant, I always advise using a peck drilling cycle. Another reason I advise it is if you're uh, having a difficult material to machine and you're unable to break the chips. A couple reasons I don't like it. The PEC drill, as you saw in that last video, it drills in, it rapids out, it rapids back in, drills, rapids out, rapids back in, and drills. What you have a tendency to do, or not a tendency, but one risk you take, is that you're recutting on chips down into the bottom of the hole. That's always bad. We never want to cut on chips. We want your uh, cutting tool on material, not recutting chips. Another reason I don't like it is if your turret or your tool position is off on X or Y zero. That means that as you're wrapping out and wrapping back in, it might be dragging along the side. For those two reasons, I don't like G83, but I think the positives of it offset those negatives. So now that we got into that, let's actually talk about the program itself of G83. 
So your G83 line is gonna consist of a very simple format that after I go over this, we're gonna bloop it up real quick and you can see it. It will look like this, G83 with a Z value, a Q value, and an F value. The G83 itself in the line just means we're calling up that cam cycle G83 that FANUC or FANUC rec recognizes. Your Z value is the total depth that you're going to drill, not your peck increment, it's the total depth of your endpoint in Z. The Q is arguably the most important part of it. That is your depth of cut per pass. So as you wrap it out and you wrap it back in, how much it's going to cut before it wraps back out is your Q. For all the FANUX that I've used, it's been Q with a whole number not a decimal. For example, Q1000 or Q10000. The amount of numbers you put as that Q has to uh, directly correlates with, if you go to your offset screen and see how many values are in that, if it's four or five, that is how many numbers you have to put for the Q value. And it directly relates into thousands per inch. Here's an example, Q1000, Q1234, four numbers after the Q. On my offset screen on these Tsugami M08s, I can only offset to the fourth decimal place. So that Q1000 will mean a hundred thousandths. If I go Q5000, that's 500 thousandths. On some of our Tsugami switch machines, we go down to the fifth decimal place. So Q one zero 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 is one hundred thousands. Q five zero 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 is five hundred thousands. And then your feed rate, of course, is whatever you would feed that drill at. I don't modify that feed rate higher or lower based on whether or not I'm using just the standard G1. If you don't know what that is, go back a couple episodes. We covered G codes. G1 is your linear interpolation or your feed move. I don't change that up whether or not I'm doing just a G1 or a G83. My feed is my feed from my drill from my manufacturer. G83 ZQF. There's something else that you could put on there that I don't use often. It's an R value or your retract value. So you're going to wrap it G0 to your approach point, X0 mostly, unless you're using like a U drill that you could drill off center. Or if you're using a drill like this, like an insert tip, indexable tip, you'd be at X0. Whatever your Z approach is, your safe approach to not smash your part or your tool, and your R could be R.1, R.05, R.5. That is how far it's going to wrap it back out as your retract value out. So if you're going to choose R1 inch, you're going to come out an inch. If you're going to choose R.050, you're going to come out 50 from your approach value that you, um, you go to. So that is basically a layout of our G83. It's a simple code, and like I said, it's not a miracle code. There's times that you want to use it. There's times I would support using it. There's times I wouldn't. If you have a drill like this, this you drill this is 1 and 3 eighths diameter. If you were drilling 1 times deep, meaning 1.375 deep, I would never use a G83. I'm just going to use a linear interpolation drill at once. If you were drilling down to, you know, this full flute, you know, say four or five inches or something like that, and you don't have through, through tool coolant on your machine, I would definitely use a G83. You don't want to be dry down in the hole. Make sure that you use that coolant, that lubricity, the way it's designed to. So I hope that answered any questions about G83. What we're going to do right now, we're going to watch another one blurbed up with a program synced up at the same time. You can see 
We had our prep functions in the program, tool call out, RPM call out, G99, G97, which is inches per revolution and direct RPM as opposed to constant surface speed. And then we call up our G83. Well, we have our approach position and our G83 is our Z depth of where we want to drill to on our print. And then of course we come out and go back home, GOG28, U0, W0, M30. And we'll, we're going to cover a lot more of those codes, but um, M30 is program reset, rewind. It'll stop the wherever it sees that. It's going to end the program, shut off any functions like coolant, spindle, stuff like that, and reset to the beginning of the program. It's not that difficult. And based on a lot of the comments that I get in the videos I post, both here on Practical Machinist and my personal channel, you guys are smart. You guys know what you're doing. And I know that some of you guys are learning you can handle this without a doubt, no problem. G83 is a, is a simple, fun code. So that being said, that concludes this wonderful episode of The Lathe Lab. I have been your host, Luke, with Practical Machinist. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.